expresión de tu vida nos da. They come through the Oceania region where they play teams like New Zealand, Fiji. The Australians starting with Confoy, Hewitt, Makor, Aitchison and Amandolia in Costa Rica with Solis, Pecadol. Gilberto Alpazar, Chavez and Garrow in goal. So it's Solis with the first position for Costa Rica. Jose Garrow is the goalkeeper. Underway in this match between Australia and Costa Rica. It's Costa Rica's first ever appearance in the World Championship Finals. One of their squad of 14 is Ronaldo Fonseca who plays here in Guatemala with Comunicaciones. He's also an outdoor international for Costa Rica. And this week he was in action in that World Cup qualifier, which we told you about earlier. Hewitt, the little man from Australia, earning the whistle. He is one of the smallest players in the tournament, but he's a very strong player, the number three for Australia. And it's going to be the Australian vice-captain Simon Aitchison to take the free kick. Aitchison. Amendolia! Oh, watch for Jamie Amendolia. He's a fine young player at 23 years of age. Well, it was a great opening for Amendolia. It just wasn't picked up at all then. You expected better cover from Costa Rica. And they've given the ball away once more. And the shot was well wide by Aitchison. He steadied, he had a lot of time, and didn't control the ball as he would have liked. Back it goes now to Solis. Solis is the number three for Costa Rica. Juarez is number seven. Solis, past Aitchison. Chavez, on the far side. Alpazar. Two Alpazars playing in this side. The brothers from Costa Rica, Alejandro and Gilberto. Gilberto is the man out there at the moment. Hewitt. Makor. Makor! No great power in the shot, but he had Jose Garo stretching for it. Well, this is a confident start by the Australians as they chip the ball back to the Costa Rican goalkeeper. And all the play so far has been in the Costa Rican half. The first two minutes of this match, Hewitt. Jamie Amendolia, Aitchison. They really are the key men for this Australian side, the three who are passing the ball around between them now. Aitchison. The pass just too wide it was intended for Daniel McCaw. A misplaced pass there, Mike, but Australia will be encouraged by the start that they've made. 
Jose Garo. Chavez. He had a good movement down the left side by Pecador. But the pass didn't find its mark. Interesting that uh, Costa Rica are using Chavez almost as a conventional target man for them. He's six foot six inches tall, which is a mighty size, even for an outdoor player. But particularly indoors, where you expect the players with a lower center of gravity and balance to, to maybe shine. You certainly do expect that, and yet watching the Brazilians in action in Group A on the opening day of the championships, they somehow dispelled the myth that all the good players were small players. Uh, quite a big side, the Brazilians, and very much the favourites to win a fourth world title. Chavez, again, passing. In fact, it was often Australian. I was going to say a loose pass, but it did take a deflection. Hewitt. Macor, but once again with Costa Rica. Well, really, the first time Costa Rica have taken the ball into the Australian half, but it ends up with Amandolia. Aitchison. Brett Hewitt is one of the older players in the side. The little man who has the ball now, 29 years of age, from the Sydney Falcons club. It's a fledgling league in Australia, very much amateur players, but quite a few of them from the Sydney Falcons co uh, club. Australia here playing with what looks like a 1-3-1 formation. The four outfield players are all rotating, but they always leave one man up front. The whistle goes Costa Rica's way. Picardo. He's a clever man with the ball. Ball skills in close, so important in the game of futsal, in this confined area where the movement is so fast. Solis. Pecado. This is Gilberto Alpazar. Confidence starting to grow as Costa Rica are able to hang on to the ball a little longer. Over the sideline, a Costa Rican ball. Aitchison thought it was his for Australia. Pecador goes back to Garo, who is well out from goal. A little like the tactics employed on day one by the goalkeeper from Guatemala, who played much of the game outside of his own D. A man with great flair. We look forward to seeing more of that throughout the tournament. Solis goes back to Garrow. And once again they do that, but Hewitt puts the pressure on for Australia. It was a strong charge and he will get a yellow card. Well, it was a strong attack on the ball and on the man. And the yellow card against Brett Hewitt of Australia. And a caution for Australia after less than five minutes of the opening period. It's not the start Australia would have wanted from that point of view, but that is an indication of the passion in this Australian team at the moment. He saw Garrow under pressure and he wanted to force the error. Amandolia. He's been one of the promising players around the Australian scene for some years. McCaw, whistle goes his way. The free kick to Australia. The wall can form, both sides in futsal are permitted five accumulated fouls per half. Anything beyond that though, they will send their opposing team to a 10 metre penalty. Amandolia. Sending it across, but there was no one there. Well, Amandolia knew what he wanted, but there was no one inside the D. Aitchison takes it for Australia. And now from the side, the Costa Rican bench, their coach Carlos Quiras. Macor back to Amandolia, just losing the ball momentarily.
Good movement by McCall, just too long by Amandolia. It was a nice move, but just too much on the kick. And Costa Rica will bring it back. Amandolia intercepting and sending it over the sideline. Chavez. Costa Rica looking to make an impact back in the World Championships, but the first time they've qualified, so they will feel this is extra special. Chavez, Chavez, still there, under pressure, knocked over the line by Aitchison. With the ball, it's Diego Solis. Picado, Picado long, looking for Solis. Well, they call Solis the governor. He was the most valuable player in the qualifying rounds for Costa Rica. He's got very much a holding role. He's now 38 years of age, but there he had the opportunity to get forward, and he was forward very quickly. Amandolia. Australia had a very disappointing World Championships in 1996. They didn't win a game. Beaten by the Ukraine, 11-2. By Egypt, 8-2. And by Spain, 7-0. Jim Roberts, coach now, as he has been at the last two World Championships. But having said that, in two of those matches, the scores were very tight at half-time. Against Egypt, the Australians were down by only a goal. And even against Spain, who ended up taking second place in the championships, it was only 2-0 at half-time. It really does demonstrate the importance of concentration for the full 40 minutes, because the scores blew out! Look at that score! Oh! It was a big shot on goal, just wide to the right, and it bounced into the backboard. But McCaw, it came from a long way out. And let's have a look at it again. McCaw dashing down the right side and he rocketed the ball just wide. I think in Australia you might call that a ripper. It wasn't bad, it was a ripper of a shot. But I think a real ripper in Australia would have to go into the back of the net. Aitchison to McCaw, Hewitt. Yes, so those performances in 96 by the Australians, down just a couple of goals. Amandolia looking for Hewitt again. It, it was good intent by Amandolia. Hewitt not too far away, but very important. With the game turning around from one end to the other so quickly, a lapse in concentration for only a moment, and good teams can take a huge advantage of that. Chance now for Costa Rica. Still there, and finally gathered by the Australian keeper, Confoy. Oh, my word. He lost it and had to scoop it in with his left hand. And the player causing the problems there for Australia was Chavez, the player who's six foot six inches tall. A solid break forward by him, creating the opening there for Inaken. And at the other end, it wasn't far wide. Well, this has been an exciting opening. McCaw, the man in action. Australia will take the corner through Aitchison. Knocked out of play by Solis, the governor. The veteran of that side for Costa Rica. Hewitt and Amandolia. McCaw. The Australians have played warm-up matches over recent times. Their results have been quite impressive. Long shot, way offline from Pecadol. Under pressure from Hewitt. But really, Costa Rica just not getting much of the ball at the moment. And perhaps that forced the, the quick and rather ambitious shot from Pecadol from just inside the halfway. The Australians somehow able to find a great deal of room already. Intending to concentrate on the long ball. Some of their passing is 20 metres or so. Amandolia traps it well. 
Difficult pass to take, and now Costa Rica, well, they had an opportunity, but Confoy just waiting for the ball to get inside the D, almost putting himself under some pressure. Hewitt. Amendolia knocking it over the line. That's Zwangabani, Elliot Zwangabani for Australia, awaiting his opportunity. Zwangabani, one of six survivors from the team that competed in Spain in 1996. So too, this man Aitchison has the dignitaries watch on. Zwangabani now on the pitch and on the ball. He'll have a pivotal role for Australia, I suspect, here trying to take charge of things in the midfield. He's obviously among the elite group of players in futsal in Australia to make this team, but he has been for some years, the 27-year-old. Costa Rica starting to get a little of the ball now in the Australian half and putting Australia under pressure. Solis accepting it back from Inakan. And they send it back to Jose Garo. Again, well outside his D. Happy to do that, looping it over the top. Confoy says thank you very much. And he will send it back. One on one just outside the D between Pecado and Makoa. Well, we normally anticipate short, sharp passing movements, but here both sides prepared to use the long ball whenever they can. Hewitt. Aitchison putting it straight into Inakin. No score. McCaw. Australia have had a couple of opportunities, and Australia will get a free kick here. It goes against Carnaval. And this is the incident, and perhaps he was harshly treated. Certainly, Costa Rica believe he was, but Australia with a free kick. It was for obstruction, Mike. Aitchison with the free kick. Eight metres from goal. Oh, a little pass off for Zwangabani, and Zwangabani was looking at the goals before he had his foot on the ball. Solis. Pecado. Back with Zwangabani. Carvajal. Costa Rica will take it back. So it's been a scoreless start to this match. It's approaching the halfway mark of the first half. Inakan. Carvajal doing his best to keep it in. Just in front of the Australian bench where Polly Wada is about to come on. Hewitt. Zwangabani. Hewitt again. He'll be a busy player. Much will rely on him as he makes good ground. McCaw. Costa Rican defence back in their zone. And all McCaw can do is send it back to the keeper, Convoy. Aitchison again to Convoy. Australia have had a couple of scoring opportunities. Hewitt, the quick pass. McCall. Now Hewitt again. Aitchison out to his left. Hewitt decided to shoot himself into a wall of players. Aitchison asks the question whether it could be Australia's ball. No, says the referee. Now Hewitt has gone off. He's taken a well-earned breather. He's already done a lot of running for Australia. He's been driving forward on numerous occasions. Amendolia coming back on and with the ball for Australia as a substitution is about to be made. Arce is coming on for Costa Rica in a moment. Amendolia after his rest back in the action. Aitchison to McCaw. He is the target man, McCaw. He is the man. He's a strong man. And he's the man they look for up forward. He's able to hold the ball up. So far, to no effect. Confoy, again the long throw from Confoy. McCaw, hit it over the line. It'll be an Australian corner.
Australia have certainly worked on their set plays. We've seen a couple of opportunities from free kicks. Can they create anything here from the corner? McCaw, Costa Rica there with numbers, and they force the Australian side to take the ball into touch. Espinosa is out there now, number nine for Costa Rica. Remembering that both teams can have five players or will have five players on the pitch at any one time, barring incidents, and up to nine substitutes. Unlimited rotational substitutions, so plenty of options for the coaches. Good move this by Costa Rica. Solis goes down, Amandolia is the Australian culprit. And the free kick will be taken for Costa Rica from the side. That was a very good break by Pacado. Surge of pace which took him away. Straight into Aitchison and Carnaval sees the ball go back over the line. So we're midway through this first half and Costa Rica and Australia both nil all. Picado. Oh, opening now for Costa Rica. Confoy was down, the Australian keeper, but it was cleared by Aitchison. Wells, fresh on the pitch for Australia on the counter-attack. And desperation in the goal mouth. The keeper was down. Wells, another big, strong player. Strongly built player out there for Australia. Taking the place of McCaw. It's by far the most physical of the games that we've seen so far in Futsal 2000. This is the fourth fixture. There were two in Group A yesterday. This is the second in Group C today. And Croatia, who next play Australia, and having already lost against Russia, their players are currently in the stands watching, trying to see if they can pick out one or two chinks maybe in the armory. Well, it is a group that's really set up for Croatia, you would think. Russia looking very hot favourites to go through to the second phase. Now the referee's consulting. Drop ball and sent back by Wells. Effectively giving up possession. And it is a game of good sportsmanship, of fair play, and sometimes if the players feel there has been a wrong decision made, they will concede possession to the opposition goalkeeper. And of course, as part of the Futsal World Championships, we do have a fair player award made at the end of the tournament. This is David Pollywater, Zwangabani, and Amandolia. Wells, strong man in that pivot. Wells again, but the free kick is against Australia. And it is a very physical encounter. And once again, the card will come out. This time, it is against Jason Wells. Five fouls to Australia. And that is seven and a half minutes or so out of half time. So the Australians getting themselves into a very awkward position here. Any further fouls and Costa Rica will go to the 10 meter penalty spot. Confoy. Wells. And there is another foul. So it's going to be a 10 meter penalty. Another against Wells. Well, I was about to say, this is the physical style that Australia play. Coach Jim Roberts possibly would have been thinking of a timeout to suggest let's tone it down before half time because more fouls here and we can get ourselves in a lot of trouble. No wall in place. And listen to the boos here for Fonseca. Too wide. War is taking it. So a let off for Australia. That was a dreadful penalty from an international footballer, an international 11-a-side footballer at that too.
Fonseca didn't even find the target. He should have tested the goalkeeper. Well, Australia <laughs> racking up the fouls at a very early rate. And that really does provide an opening for Costa Rica. They should have taken one then. But with still a long way to go in the first half, this is only the 13th minute. They may yet have other opportunities to put one past the Australian goalkeeper. Zwangabani. Polly Wada. Wells. Wells! Well, he did well to control it on his right and then swing onto his left. But the shot was straight into the keeper. Arce goes down. Australia will take the ball. Well, Wells there did remarkably well. He's so strong when he's in possession. Angle wasn't quite right for a shot with power. And this time, he earns the free kick. Costa Rica yet to get themselves into foul trouble, though. Four accumulated fouls for Costa Rica. The Australians, six. So the Australians will hope that Costa Rica can cause a couple of mistakes. Amendolia, Aitchison. Wells, waiting for it. And easily cleared away. And now the fast break, Juarez. In fact, it's Fonseca. The ball is going to be turned over. An error by Costa Rica on the sideline. Remembering that the ball must be played within four seconds. And it's been given back to Australia. Well, the game is designed to be fast and furious. Clock is stopped, of course, every time the ball is out of play. Espinosa. Well done by Amandolia to cut it off, but it's back with Costa Rica in the D. Desperate defence by the Australians. Amandolia will clear it over the sideline. Confoy finding himself on all fours and needed the help of his defenders. Again, the long throw from Convoy, intended for Wells. And who was sweeping up there at the back for Costa Rica, though, but Solis. Solis, who's got this holding role. He's the playmaker. He's also acting as a sweeper whenever Australia tried to exploit that long ball. Convoy eager to throw it forward. Amadolia! What a goal! Oh, what a goal by Australia. Set play from the corner. And aren't they delighted? The corner was played by David Pollywater and Jamie Amendolia's lethal right boot rocketing the ball past the goalkeeper. What a terrific finish that was. We've said already that Australia had worked on their set plays. That was a magnificent finish. It really was. Amendolia sharply on to the corner kick. Just had a yard on his marker there and it was enough. What a great goal. We will see some outstanding goals in these championships. That will be right up there with them. Indeed, we've already seen some wonderful goals in the first two days of competition. But what a strike by Jamie Amendolia. There's the scoreline. Australia 1, Costa Rica 0. And Costa Rica have just committed their fifth foul. And there's the man who scored the goal for Australia. Pollywater, the man who gave it to him. Aitchison. Confoy. Back with Pollywater. Pollywater, long goal! Oh, that was almost deflected in by Wells. Well, once again, the Australians looking very dangerous as they take the ball forward a couple of fast moves there and that wasn't too far away by wells it's been a good first half for australia they've grown in confidence and now costa rica have called a timeout
Well, the Australians will be buoyed by that early strike by Jamie Amendolia. Costa Rica know that this team from Oceania, despite the fact that they are one of only five teams to compete at all world championships, it doesn't indicate by any means that Australia is a power at this level. They have struggled at world championship level, but they have been able to make it through the qualifiers. And this is no easy game for Costa Rica. Australia currently ranked 13th in the world. They've made a very bright start. Jim Roberts, the coach there, taking charge of operations on the touchline. He's got massive experience, Jim Roberts. He's also led a number of fact-finding missions with the Australians to Brazil. Brazil, of course, the world leaders in futsal. And you can't but learn from the best. Australia taking every opportunity to pick the brains of the leading figures in Brazil. Indeed, the Australians had a Brazilian as their assistant coach back in 1996, but the results didn't come their way. And Jim Roberts has sole responsibility once again. Nice use of the ball by Fonseca. Wells deep in the Australian defence. And they have forced the goal kick. Well, the tactics by Australia are quite obvious. They use this man, Wells, and before him, McCaw, as the target men. The big strong men. Oh, that's not a bad shot from the side. And Garo got a hand on it. Well, that really was an audacious angle. He had no right to test the goalkeeper from there. He's indicating, perhaps, that he's taken a bit of a knock, though. He's a very powerful player. He may have just overstretched there, Wells. It could be a hamstring. He's just indicating, perhaps, that there should be a substitution. And my word, without a hand on that, it would have gone very close to the corner of the net. Amendolia. Amendolia. Oh, that is a strong tackle. A very strong charge by Amendolia. And once again, Australia racking up the fouls as Costa Rica. Will worry about the condition of their man who's on the ground. I think it's Fonseca. In fact, it's Picado. Yeah, yeah Picado who's down. In the meantime, though, Costa Rica can take the ball to the 10-metre penalty. Pecado is still down, and that's why, because of the, ch the tackle by Amandolia. Valverde is going to take the free kick. Without the wall in place, the seventh accumulated penalty. Costa Rica down by a goal. Adam Confoy trying to defend for Australia. Valverde for Costa Rica. Yes! Costa Rica score! The equaliser! And that really was a ripper. Fantastic shot there by Valverde. Oh, what a strike by Valverde. That's how the penalty should be taken from the 10 metre. Not too far away from the keeper, but such power. And it's one all. Let's have a look at it again, right into the top of the net. And Costa Rica can take it forward. Confoy. The scoreline reading Australia 1, Costa Rica 1. Exciting attacking game of futsal. Makor is back on, replacing Wells. But Solis takes it. And two very different styles. Australia very direct. Costa Rica more patient, lots of movement from them. Very similar to the first game that we saw where Croatia relied on heavy defence and the breakaway to try and exploit the openings which they created against Russia. Pekadol, who took that heavy knock, but he is up and about. The Costa Rican fans getting behind their team now. Having scored the equaliser. And the Australians will be ruining those fouls that they've accumulated. Chavez. Amandolia. Off Chavez. But I would imagine it's 
probably there's probably not a lot the Australians can do about it. This is the way they play their futsal. A very physical game. And they can't suddenly turn around and ease off. It's the aggression that gets them the results, but it also costs them on occasions. And Amandolia, hero turned villain very quickly, having put Australia in head and then conceding that penalty kick. Hewitt back out there for Australia, back to Amandolia. Corner. And a timeout has been called by Australia. So I wonder what the message is from Jim Roberts. He has the opportunity of a set play down here, remembering the last set play that the Australians had from the corner. They were able to score a magnificent goal. I'm sure that will be discussed. And I think the number of fouls that they have accumulated would also be mentioned in this 60 second briefing. Yes, it can be aggressive, but it's also going to be controlled. You could see the look of frustration in Amandolia's eyes as he as he lost the ball. Well, the Australians have uh, grown up with other codes of football that are in fact very aggressive. Australian football, rugby league, rugby union, very much physical games. And many of these players would have had a taste of those other codes and they do bring their aggression to the game of soccer and in this case futsal. This is a very vocal crowd. A capacity of 4,000. It's not quite full here at Teodoro Flores, but a very good crowd nonetheless. Aitchison takes the corner. Knocked away. No damage done this time for Costa Rica. White is out there now for Australia. His first opportunity. With the ball, though, Juarez. Pecador. Chavez. Juarez was making a good position through the middle. It's back to Solis. Chavez. Across he goes. The header intended there for Solis. It was too wide for him, but Costa Rica will take the ball from the side. It's Brett Hewitt. Juarez, long and ambitious and way over the top from Carlos Chavez. One of the youngsters in this team at just 20 years of age. A player with a great future. So to Amandolia for Australia. Peckadol taking the ball away. Peckadol, what a save! Oh, Confoy put under pressure. The question was asked of him. I don't think he got a touch on that, Mike. Oh, well, he was diving. Oh, I thought he got a finger, but maybe not. He had it covered. That's the important thing. Closing in. On half time, the score here is one all between Australia and Costa Rica. This time, Australia have given away an indirect free kick indicated there with the raised hand. Solis, Pecador, Chavez, Chavez still with it. Juarez knocked over the line by Amandolia. This is a crucial time of the match for Australia. They must defend well up until half time. Chavez. And Costa Rica will take the ball again. I mentioned the Australian record in Spain in 96. They trailed Egypt by just one goal at half time before being beaten 8 2. And they trailed Spain by two goals before being beaten 7 0. How the game can turn. So. Australia will be desperate to try to keep the scoreline at one all at worst here at by half time. 
and launch an assault in the second half. But Costa Rica looked threatening. Chavez. He's got three Australians around him. Back in the middle. Things open up for Wise. Well, intended for Chavez again. This is the best period of sustained pressure that Costa Rica have had. Change of approach. Picardo is more prominent now. And there's another goal, number two. It's been put away by Juarez. Well, the cross came in the corner. It went right to cross all players, but then waiting deep on the right side was Juarez. And there's number two for Costa Rica. What an angle. Juarez completely unmarked. Just did enough. Solis it was who drove the ball across the face of the Australian goal. Confoy, wrong-footed, off balance, and beaten by Juarez. And what an angle by Juarez. And Costa Rica wave the flags as they take a 2-1 lead. Well, it was a sustained attack. The Australians were under pressure. And ultimately they paid the price. Amandolia. Hewitt. Oh, well, he tried to be clever then, but it went straight to Suarez. Australia have now lost their way a little bit. How I wonder now, will Amandolia regret that foul which gave Costa Rica the opportunity to equal from the penalty spot? They've grown in stature. They've gone on now to take the lead, 2-1. Australia paying the price for losing their discipline a little bit. It's an unforgiving game. A game requiring full concentration for the full 40 minutes of playing time. Makor. Well, Amandolia rifled one home from a similar spot. Not quite as wide a little earlier. He tried his luck again. Juarez, the man who scored the goal, long. Convoy for Australia, again the long counter-attack, too long. And calling McCaw says here, in front of me, not over my head. Well, it's proved to be an effective tactic for Australia in this first half, the long ball thrown out by the goalkeeper. Chavez, who was looking for Solis, marked by Hewitt. Now Australia down by a goal. I mentioned desperate to keep it at one all. Now, crucial for Australia. They try to keep it at least at 2-1. Inside the last 20 seconds of the half, Amandolia, McCaw. Amandolia, Aitchison, they will launch a last second attack, surely. Last few seconds, Amandolia. Whistle goes, it is half time. Well, they were patient, too patient in the dying seconds. They would have loved to have got one last attempt away at goal. But an exciting first half, and the Costa Ricans will be very happy with their situation at the break. Coming back from a goal down, they go into half time leading Australia two goals to one. The goal scored by Juarez and Valverde. Australia scoring th first through Amandolia. This is a Group C encounter. Group C also in including Russia and Croatia. The Australian coach, Jim Roberts, the man in charge of this team in 1992 in Hong Kong, in Spain in 96, and again here in Guatemala in the year 2000. And Jim Roberts has assembled a young and vibrant squad. The average age is just 22. Australia currently ranked 13th in the world. And the Australians take the first possession of the second half. Not for long, though, as Costa Rica will bring it back. Their goalkeeper is Jose Garo. He was under some pressure, particularly early in the first half. The Australians firing in some chances. Juarez, one of the goal scorers 
in the first half. Aitchison robs him of the ball, but back with Costa Rica. And holding on to it, the youngster, Carlos Chavez. Juarez. Picador. And they're just going backwards at the moment, so that's good pressure applied by the Australians. And Simon Aitchison will take the ball from the side. So Costa Rica going nowhere. And that is a dreadful mistake by Simon Aitchison. I'm surprised, actually, that Aitchison wasn't uh, asked to take that again because I don't even think the ball was in play. I tend to agree with you. But I don't think it's something that would please Jim Roberts because they did work so hard in defending that Costa Rica possession. And then, because of the missed kick, it was given back. Pecado. Solis, Juarez, and a whistle behind play. It's against Australia. An obstruction again. Hand raised there by the official on the near side. Chavez, taken away by Makua. Two one the score line for Costa Rica. Aitchison, this is David Pollywatta. Amandolia, the man who scored Australia's goal. McCaw, Pollywatta, and back over the far side to Aitchison. They moved the ball around quite well. That was to no effect, though, by Amandolia. He was hoping somebody would be coming past on the outside. Well, we've made the point that this is a game all about skill, but it's also about positional sense, having the ability to read the play and the intelligence to create openings for your teammates. The object really is to keep the passing game moving. And hold on to possession of the ball. We see that particularly with the European teams. They just hold on to possession for a long, long time until they find there's an opportunity to set something up. Amandalia, but forced out by Peckadol. Pollywater will take it from the sideline. Solis, the 38-year-old. Nice shot on goal from Aitchison, but into the hands of Garo. That was a very good move. Aitchison and Makor working well there together. Makor just teeing the ball up for Aitchison as he charged in. We saw the half-time statistics. The Australians had quite a few shots on goal and quite a few on target. So Garrell has had a lot of work to do in goal for Costa Rica. Pollywater couldn't get it past Solis. Chavez was very tall, very talented young player. And Aitchison just feeling his ribs there because he felt he was held off by Chavez, who's on the ball again now. You can see the veteran Solis go past, decides to go to Juarez. Well, certainly Costa Rica now deciding to hold on to the ball. They have settled, I think, surprised by the aggressive tactics. Polly is there for Australia. And Aitchison allows it to pass over the line. Great vision there by Chavez as well. Chavez, back passes. Juarez still there. Solis. Solis, Chavez, he can go back to Solis, decides to take it back to the halfway. Australia have to get a grip of things now, no doubt about that. Well, Costa Rica have all the ball. In the first half, the Australians had 55% of the ball. So they did far better. As all the VIPs are here watching this Group C encounter. But certainly Costa Rica getting a lot of possession early in this second half and holding onto the ball for a great deal of time. McCaw back to Amandolia. Hollywater went the halfway. Pass making Amandolia skip back. Well, now really Australia running out of options. Amandolia decides to pass to no one in particular. And I think just frustrated at the lack of options 
And that is due primarily to the Costa Rican defence. Chavez. Solis to Juarez. Chavez again. Now Solis. Chavez. Solis. Goal. Oh, Juarez the scorer. Well, that was a lovely move. And Juarez gets his second. Great movement there from Costa Rica. Exchange of passes between Juarez and Chavez. They just split Australia wide open straight through the middle. Chavez picked up too late and punished there by Juarez. Juarez, number seven. The goalkeeper committed, but Juarez able to get it past him for his second goal. Costa Rica, three, leading Australia one. And Costa Rica very much on top. And interesting, Costa Rica have terrific fighting qualities. They won their qualifying tournament. As we watch Makor, no great power on the shot. They won the qualifying tournament, beating Cuba 2-0 in the final. And twice they came from behind. Another chance. Solis. This time it goes out of play. An Australian deflection. So it's going to be a Costa Rican corner. Twice they came from behind in the qualifying tournament for victory. And they've come from behind again today. There's the build up. Solis. A goal kick. A throw from Confoy. In fact, he shaped as if he was going to throw it long again. Elected not to. Amandalia. Well, you just sense the spirit dropping out of this Australian side. And confidence building for Costa Rica, who shoot it long. That was Gilberto Alpizar. Alpizar with a shot, but yet more tremendous skill by Chavez. Aitchison, Amandolia, who scored the opening goal of the match to give the Australians the lead. Let's have a look at this shot on goal again. It was from a long way out. And all the possession at the moment with Costa Rica. Aitchison trying something for Australia. The long shot from beyond halfway from Solis. Back it goes. Out to Makor. Poliwata with the blue shoes out there. Likewise, Aitchison. Now Poliwata a chance. Oh, the pass was just a little wide. Intent was good. But the finish wasn't there. Wasn't a bad ball, actually, by Aitchison. Polywater just took his eye off the ball as it was delivered it forward. Australia will take it from the side as Jim Roberts makes a substitution. Hewitt plays the ball, replacing Amandolia. Aitchison. Attempted header. He was just offline, but the big men up forward for Australia, McCaw, and when he's resting, Wells. Proving real targets. No nope, chance, Costa Rica. Picado. Oh, great save by the Australian convoy. There was an opening there for Alejandro Alpazar. The convoy was down on all fours, making the save. Aitchison passing it wide, and once again, the Australians turning over the ball as we look at this opportunity. And it was a good diving save by Confoy. Once again, Costa Rica moving it forward. Alpazar and giving away the foul, Aitchison. Aitchison says, well, I was being held, but it doesn't really matter what the players say. It's what the referee decides, and very rarely do they change their minds. Alejandro Alpazar has made a big impression since coming on. We didn't see too much of him during the opening 20 minutes. Solis to take the free kick. Alpazar, Hewitt, 
Long shot, save from Confoy. Gilberto Alpazar putting the shot in from 12 metres. Costa Rican corner. Sorry, Mike, I was just going to say that uh, Alberto Alpazar hit that quite well, but it was at the right height, really, for the goalkeeper, just stretching away to his left. Pecadol, Poliwata robbed him of the ball, but it will go back to Costa Rica. Seven minutes into the second half, and Costa Rica extending their half-time lead of 2-1, out to 3-1 now. McCaw, Aitchison, again the pass was just wide. And the, really the passing of the Australians letting them down somewhat. Again, allowing the turnover. Gilberto Alpazar, Inakin, just coming into the action now for Costa Rica. And sent over the side there by Pecadol. And good work there by Pali Wada, putting the Costa Rica player under pressure. McCaw. Oh, clever work with the ball. Good skills by Gilberto Alpazar. And another card comes out. And this time it's Aitchison. So three yellow cards for the Australians. And they are mounting up at the rate of knots. Jason Wells was given a yellow card in the first half. Also... Brett Hewitt and now Simon Aitchison. Two yellow cards for any player and of course they're off. And the side is down a man for two minutes. A replacement in futsal can be made after a send-off but only after either a goal is scored by the other team or of course that two minutes has elapsed. Aitchison the latest culprit. Long ball, the header, as the Australian keeper was well out. Carvajal unable to get his head on the ball. Australia in the second half without Jason Wells, who did so well for them in the, the opening 20 minutes. On the occasions he was on the pitch rolling substitutions allowed in futsal but Wells did hold his hamstring a very strong and solid player and you suspect he might have done some damage as he overstretched to get a shot in on goal but Australia missing him here McCaw is normally rest oh there's the shot from McCaw but straight to the keeper McCaw is the man who was in the starting five but he's been able to take the rest in the in the past because of the presence of Wells there's a chance help us ah! Oh, Gilberto finding the side of the net. Brilliant movement, though, by Costa Rica. Look at the footwork here. Swangobani to Hewitt. Swangobani just coming on for the first time in the second half. Amandolia has taken a rest. Got his, his uh, concentration back, and he is out there once again. May have hurt the shoulder as he crashed heavily into this very hard timber. Aitchison will take the corner for Australia. Australia down by two goals. Amandolia! Well, that was hopeful. There was a wall of players in front of him. He sent it high and wide. Quick break, Aitchison's there for Australia. Clever work by Aitchison, keeping it in play to Amandolia. Now Zwangobani. Brett Hewitt. Hewitt, Aitchison. He got a boot on it, but it deflected. And that is kicked right into the VIP area by Jose Garo. I have to say that Hewitt has to be careful. He was raising his uh, his arms and his elbows then as he tried to win the ball back for Australia. And we just saw Jason Wells running along the sidelines there. Perhaps he will be okay to come back on for Australia. Amandolia. 
He's got three to beat, though, and the numbers win out for Costa Rica. Pecador. It's Juan Gobani against Carvajal. And I think the Costa Ricans will be well pleased with this scoreline now. And after Australia posed so many threats early on, still there. Aitchison, still there for Costa Rica. Pecador. Alpazar, Gilberto Alpazar, he's 29 years of age. Alejandro Alpazar, the younger of the brothers, at 21. Gilberto. Inakan, trying to get around Hewitt. Hewitt pressuring and earns the ball from the side. Good work there by Hewitt to force the player wide. Amendolia, clever use, and he goes down. Picardo. Well, the card will come out for Picardo. A yellow, the first time that Costa Rica have been in strife with a caution. took the ball he also took the man the yellow card there pick it all with the yellow card the Costa Rican number four and Elliot Zwangabani will take the free kick outside the area for Australia Aitchison was calling for it well it was now that the keeper is out Confoy was out and Zwangabani came down to offer support Oh, closing in on goal was Valverde. Now, Costa Rica a chance. The save. Perfect il illustration there of the fact you can't give away possession, and that was a dreadful free kick. Dreadful free kick by Zwangabani. Aitchison was calling for it, but again, it didn't find its mark. So a corner at the other end now. Picado. Hewitt. Aitchison. And the goalkeeper, Adam Confoy. To Jose at the other end. Carroll. Australia's ball. So we're beyond the 30-minute mark. And Costa Rica with a two-goal buffer. Coming from behind, as they did twice in their qualifying tournament. And the way they're playing, you wouldn't be surprised if they go further in front. They're creating the better angle, certainly Espinosa up front here for Costa Rica. Here he is again. Carvajal. Valverde. A whistle going Australia's way. Simon Aitchison, the vice captain of this team. Really magnificent tournament being staged here. The VIPs would be well pleased, I'm sure, with the crowds, with the standard of futsal, and with what they've seen in the first two days. Amendolia. Amendolia! Just wide to the left. Well, he turned 360 degrees. He ended up missing the left upright by a metre. Way down the other end. Aitchison. This is Jamie Amendolia's turn and shot. As I mentioned, a metre wide. Aitchison to Zwangabani. Both sides with two accumulated fouls in this second half and Hewitt took his eyes off it and is forced to send it back to Convoy. Straight to the other end. Amendolia in the thick of things again. The whistle goes against him, Inakin. 
takes the free kick. Around eight and a half minutes remaining in this match. And Costa Rica leading three goals to one. This would be a very good start in Group C for the Costa Ricans if they're able to take the points here against Australia. They have two hard matches to come. Another chance. Codfoy's there to save. Chavez closing in on goal from the angle. Quick freeze and quick thinking there. In it goes. Inikin. Inikin. Back to Chavez. Aitchison got a foot on it. Amendolia loses it. And at the halfway, Pekadol couldn't quite take it, but he would take it from the side regardless. There's Costa Rica and Australia, of course, both have Croatia and Russia to come. So it will be difficult for either of these teams to make it to the quarterfinals. But surely you would think a victory here imperative for either team's chances and Costa Rica find themselves in the box seat. Zwangabani leading the ball over the line. It's going to be a corner. Shot on goal, another one! Inakan! Number four for Costa Rica. And they are making things awfully difficult for Australia. Four goals to one. Inakan gets his first. Lots of concentration. Only had the slightest glimmer of goal there. Inakan. That's his first goal, but he's been very prominent in this second half. Inekan. Hewitt. Experience in international matches so important. Costa Rica, four goals to Australia, one. Australia losing concentration from late in the first half. They were heading to half-time with a one-goal lead. And then the accumulated fouls took its toll. And just before half-time, Juarez scored another. And I think the Australian spirits dropped from that time. Amandalia, the call goes against him, Pekadol. Both sides on three accumulated fouls. Enneken, the man who scored the goal. Valverde, Enneken. The man sends it out to Chavez. He's going to be a good player, this man. So tall, so skillful, still going. Chavez! Considering he's six foot six, he's so adept and so comfortable on the ball, Carlos Chavez. Only 20, don't forget. The Australian wall being taken back. Zwangabani and also Simon Keith in the wall. And Amandolia just out, the keeper between them. In goes the shot, way over the top from Chavez, and he's disappointed, annoyed with himself at a wasted opportunity. Confoy is doing a pretty good job in goal for Australia, but he, he's under a lot of pressure. Wells back in the action for Australia, so that hamstring is OK. Zwangabani sending it over the line. And Pekadol will take it for Costa Rica. Well, Australia have lost their early sparkle. Now it's Costa Rica who are starting to play the more skillful football. And another chance for Costa Rica. Keith for Australia. Amandolia, just a little tickle on for Wells. Back to Amandolia. Again, the finish wasn't quite there, and Amandolia drops his head. Costa Rica. Oh, Solis was in front of goal. The cross came in from Pecadol, and Solis couldn't quite get to it. Change in goal for the Australians. Confoy has had a tough job out there. He goes off, and George Suarez goes into goal for the Australians. Wells sent over the sideline by Pecadol. Sorry, Mike, it's a tactical switch to bring on Suarez because he's now operating as the extra outfield player. No restrictions on goalkeepers. They can come outside the D. 
And Australia now need to press the game. They need to get more possession. Well, I know this is generally regarded as a pitch, the playing surface, but the tactic is regarded as a full court press. And that's distinct from the full pitch press, but I think you get the drift. Take one player out of goal on as many opportunities as you can and make him the fifth playmaker. And that generally happens in times of desperation. And that's the situation for Australia at the moment. Australia picking up their fifth accumulated foul now. And there is a timeout being called. Timeout called by Costa Rica, who have got the possession. Well, Australian coach Jim Roberts would be disappointed, I'm sure. I mentioned in the first half, Australia's record at Spain four years ago when they were well in the game against Egypt. Down by just two goals to one at half time before being swamped, eight goals to two. And down by just two goals to nil against the very powerful Spanish side that, of course, ended up making the final against Brazil. And the final score in there, seven nil. So I think it's an indication that some of these teams that don't play professional football and don't have a lot of exposure at international level, they find it very difficult to play out the full 40 minutes. And of course, that can often result in the scores blowing out. Timeout has been completed. And Australia will certainly be looking to not to give away any more fouls because they will send Costa Rica to the 10 metre penalty line. Amandolia stops the ball, controls it pretty well, Amandolia, but there was nobody there. Pekadol. Inakin! Inakin's already scored a goal. Now he goes down. It's okay, the corner has been called. In fact, it's from the side. Very close to the spot, Pekadol. Chavez. Chavez. Still going. Shot from the angle. Valverde, not really close. So once again, we see the Australian keeper move way out from his goal creating the extra man upfield keep and if you wonder why we've got all those boos ringing around the stadium it's because Ronaldo Fonseca is coming on for Costa Rica he plays here in Guatemala with Cabune Quesones he's also an outdoor international for Costa Rica and we mentioned in the first half that last week he was playing for Costa Rica against Guatemala in a World Cup qualifier, a game which Guatemala won 2-1. More pressure being applied. Inakin! Inakin! Oh, just wide, and I think the keeper, Suarez, may have got a hand on that. It went away to the left, and off the keeper's hand, so the corner. He's been very impressive in the second period, in Aken. Pecado. Fonseca. There's the corners, Australia eight, Costa Rica six. And the scoreline, though, very much in Costa Rica's favour. Amandolia loses the ball. Fonseca, and there's the goal, another one! Oh, Suarez committed himself, and easily put away by Nikan, who gets his second. It's surely curtains for Australia, as Inikan was on the end of one of the easiest goals that he will ever score. And the provider this time, the man they call the governor, Solis. When well, you look at the five out there for Costa Rica now, you feel that this is perhaps their strongest five. And forward they go once again. Pecado, Pecado, and Suarez got a hand on it. 
Good save. Good save. Back to Garo. And the Costa Ricans can really enjoy this now. Four minutes remaining in the match. And the scoreline reading 5 1. Rolls the target, but just a little wide for him. And there we have the goal once again. Inakin, who scored the last two for Costa Rica. How the game has turned around. Solis. Solis swings around onto his right boot. Espinosa. The shot and the save. It was put in there by Fonseca. And now out of play at the other end. Off the head of Pecador. Keith. Espinosa. And Suarez. Well, desperate times now for Australia, but how the game has turned. Jim Roberts saw his team leading by one goal to nil and looking the better team. And if you think back to the first half, despite the scoreline in Costa Rica's favour, all the other statistics, with the exception of the fouls, were certainly Australia's way. But the second half, it's been all Costa Rica. In the second half, they have scored three goals. Costa Rica with 52% possession. Shot on goal. Good save. Second one attempted there by Wells. And really, there haven't been too many shots on goal at all for Australia in the second half of this match. Solis. Amendolia takes it off him. So it's out of the way to Wells. Fonseca. Australia with the ball. Wells. They want to move it on quickly. Very quickly. When you're down by five goals to one, McCaw. Out there now is Andrew Nolan, number eight for Australia. Shot! What a goal! McCaw! Oh, my word! That was a ripper! That really was a terrific effort. And look at this, McCaw, who'd set the move going in the first place. It was a far from conventional pass. He hit it with his, his left foot underneath his right before he took, took the uh, return. Good play by Australia. Well, that was a fine goal for Australia. But two late one senses with just over two minutes of playing time. Fonseca. And Jim Roberts is calling for a timeout. So, a timeout called by Australia. And this really, dare I say it, is the last throw of the dice with two minutes remaining and three goals down. But you've got to keep trying, don't you? And the Australians won't give in. When you talk about trying, just look at the uh, expression there on Simon Aitchison's face and also there, Amendolia. Australia have worked hard, but they haven't really been the creative force which Costa Rica have shown in this second 20 minutes or so. Jim Roberts is really the man behind futsal in Australia. It's a small sport in Australia. There's only a handful of Premier League teams. And Jim Roberts is not only the national coach, but He's effectively in charge of the running of the game for the whole of the country. His third world championships. Unfortunately, though, for he and his team there, hasn't been a lot of success over the years. You might think that the game is beyond them. Three goals in two minutes. Let's not forget that yesterday Brazil had 80 goal attempts in 40 minutes, which is one every 30 seconds. I think Jim Roberts would be happy to be have his team mention the same breath as Brazil. What an outstanding team. McCaw! And again! Wells! Oh, what a save! Magnificent save by Garo! But what an attack by the Australians! And that's hurt the goalkeeper. 
Such was the force of that blow, that header. Put in by Jason Wells. I think he's playing for a timeout here. It was great goalkeeping, though. Great goalkeeping. First, the deflection, and then to get back on his feet so quickly to get away that header. Well, that really was thrilling stuff by the Costa Rican goalkeeper. And a wonderful effort by the Australians. The first attempt, and then the follow-up by Wells. And they perhaps can count themselves unlucky that they came up against some such fine goalkeeping. I think on the balance of the play, you have to say that Costa Rica have been the better side overall. By a long way. By a long, long way. Particularly in the second half. The Australians came out full of spirit, full of fight in the opening 15 minutes. But the physical way they play their game ended up costing them dearly. As once again, it's against Amandolia and Australia is in foul trouble. So this is going to be a 10 metre penalty for Costa Rica. Well, it was at a similar stage of the first half where Amandolia erred. And that gave Costa Rica their first goal on, their, on the sixth penalty, the sixth foul for Australia. And now, late in the game, a chance for another one for Costa Rica. Oh, it hit the left upright. Al Pizar putting it close, but not close enough. That was Alejandra. Al Pizar, as we see it again. Suarez in goal for Australia. The kick almost deflecting off the inside. But Costa Rica denied. Unless well, that's the second time that Costa Rica have missed from the spot. They've put one in. Still Valverde, who threatened to break the net, was the one who did find the target. Just over a minute remaining, McCaw. And Costa Rica defending well. Now a chance. Chavez! Chavez! Still there. Suarez for Australia. Tangling himself up. And it's finally over the sideline. So Suarez was under pressure, but he put the pressure back on the Costa Ricans. Makor. Arce goes down. And once again, the Australians find themselves on the wrong end of the whistle. Makor, as there will be another 10 metre penalty. This physical approach by the Australians giving away another 10 metre penalty. The second in the space of 60 seconds. And guess who's stepping forward? It's Valverde. Now, what a shot he's got. Kicked like a mule. We saw that in the first half. He has a goal already. And now a chance for a second. Good save. He's still there, though, and it's over the top. Valverde unable to put it away and quickly goes to the bench. Under 60 seconds remaining, Costa Rica heading for victory over Australia in this Group C encounter. Here's the penalty again. Excellent save. Goalkeeper trying to make as big a block as possible. Wells at the other end, but there's the Suarez save. And then ultimately over the top. Suarez, or Chavez rather. Arsay, Arsay still going, but Suarez for Australia. Wells is calling for a whistle in the D. He felt he was unfairly treated. But Costa Rica still with it. And they will take a goal kick. So time has all but disappeared now. And this has been a wonderful performance by Costa Rica. Still watching in the stands, the Croatian squad. Croatia also in this group, along with Russia. It was always assumed that it would be Croatia and Russia who would make progress. 
Costa Rica have given them something to think about, and there's something here for Suarez, the goalkeeper, to think about. Carvajal taking it, and he scores! Goal number six! Costa Rica get their sixth, and they have run away with this game in the second half, to the delight of their fans. It's been a dominant performance. Another goal coming from the 10-metre spot, and this time it's Carvajal who puts it away. Different approach this time. Didn't seem to catch the ball particularly clean. He almost seemed to, to roll off the, the sole of his boot, or it could have well been a toe poke. Didn't strike it particularly well. Skidded in past Suarez. And a corner. In the dying moments, 6-2 the scoreline. Well, it's turned out to be a very impressive performance by Costa Rica. The first time they have qualified at World Championship final level. They have played before by invitation only, but here they are victorious. In Guatemala 2000, they have secured a very impressive victory over Australia. The final score, Costa Rica defeating Australia six goals to two, and aren't the fans delighted? A very polished performance indeed by Costa Rica. Started edgily, but gradually got into their stride, took the game to Australia, and that's how it finished. The final score, Costa Rica six, Australia two, after Costa, Costa Rica led 2-1 at half-time, and after they conceded the first goal of the match. Well, they're the come-from-behind special.